Hi everyone, Kara Santa Maria here. How would you answer this question? Does prayer work? I want to see if I can get to the bottom of this scientifically. For help, I've reached out to two researchers, Tanya Marie Lerman, an anthropologist at Stanford and author of the book When God Talks Back, and Michael Shermer, executive director of the Skeptic Society and author of The Believing Brain. I asked Dr. Shermer about intercessory prayer, or praying on behalf of others. He told me that scientific attempts to study this phenomenon in the past have been met with difficulty. For example, you're, you're praying for your loved one, how do you have a control group? You, you can't exactly go to a, a bunch of fa family members of patients and say, okay, no, no praying for your guy because, you know, this is science and, and, and we, have our, we have our control group and our experimental group and all that. Yeah, that'd be pretty heartless. But in 2006, the answer to this question, at least scientifically, rang pretty clearly. When the Templeton Foundation funded this huge study out of Harvard Medical School um, that Herbert Benson directed, it was the, the definitive study. These were real heart patients um, in, in hospitals that were recovering so they could measure everything and control for all these other intervening variables. And they randomly assigned people to be prayed for and not prayed for. And, you know, Templeton is always accused of funding projects that they think they can get that will support the sort of inner interrelationship between science and religion. And this one didn't. So to their credit, they publicized the fact that there were no results at all. There was no benefit uh, to people's health for, from intercessory prayer. Credit where credit's due, I guess. When I asked Dr. Lerman about intercessory prayer, she chose not to go there. Um, it's a red herring to do research that tries to see whether prayer has consequences independent of the person who's praying. And that's a complicated question about divine intervention, and people have a lot of different views about that. And that's the research that people get all sort of hot, over, hot and bothered about. I think the research we really need to do more of is to understand how prayer changes the person who prays. And again, I think there's more and more evidence that this practice of talking to God, or at least the person that you represent in your mind as being a wise, good, loving person, is has, good, has health effects both emotionally and physically. Okay, so it seems there may be health benefits to prayer after all, so long as we're looking at the prayer, not the prayee. So I use the term sensory override to capture an experience when people have a sensory perception of something that's not kind of visibly present or not like tangibly present. And what they're recording is that they hear God speak to them or they see the wing of an angel. And I began asking these questions because I noticed that people who prayer, prayed regularly um, and who were the prayer warriors were more likely to report these experiences. Dr. Lerman studies these specific sensory overrides and claims that they change the quality of one's imagination and thinking. And this positive effect can be linked to prayer. When somebody's praying, they're using their own psychological capacities. They're using the human mind. And the human mind is human. And so uh, what I saw is that people were training their imagination and what they're really doing is learning to take seriously their thoughts and, and, their, and images that they might otherwise dismiss as just theirs. So they're paying attention to their inner experience. That changes the way they trust their inner experience, how real that inner experience becomes for them. It allows them to take the prayer process more seriously, and it also changes the vividness of that experience. That's psychological stuff. I'm a social scientist. I can't say, you know, when that's connecting to the divine or if it's connecting to the divine. I can just talk about that human side of the story. So, there's no way to study whether or not God is on the other end of the phone. The God that's commonly described in Western culture is a supernatural being. Science is the study of the natural world. Being supernatural, we conveniently can observe this God using scientific methods. So if researchers can't go there and instead only look at the very human, very secular benefits of prayer, why call it prayer at all? Doesn't that imply a known relationship with a deity, something that scientists can't touch with a 10-foot pole? Yeah, let's find a different word than prayer, you know, like self-reflective thought or something like that, or meditative thought, or, 
you know, just anything. Uh, the problem with prayers is just so wrapped up with all the religious mystical notions that it's not helpful from a scientific perspective. Now, I know this probably won't sit well with you, and it may be hard to hear, but just because you may have had a strong personal emotional experience in which you prayed and your prayers were answered, the scientific evidence simply doesn't support its efficacy. Prayer may help you feel calmer, more centered, or even lower your blood pressure, but unfortunately, praying for something to happen has absolutely no effect on its specific outcome, whether it be for health, prosperity, or Tim Tebow to get that touchdown. Remember. But the whole point of science is that, uh, you know, we, ha we can't rely on anecdotes. You know, the plural of anecdotes is not data, as they say, right? I'm interested and honestly a little nervous to hear your thoughts. Reach out to me on Twitter, Facebook, or leave your comments right here on the Huffington Post. Come on, talk nerdy to me.